Hello folks, this is Dr. Young, and in this video, we're gonna talk about how we can convert some of those functional groups that we already learned how to put onto an aromatic ring, how we can convert those and change them slightly, either oxidizing them or reducing them. So we're gonna have basically two camps here, right? We're gonna have one oxidation reaction, and we're gonna have actually three different types of reductions, right? So the oxidation that we're gonna see is that we're gonna, we're gonna be able to turn an alkyl group Right, we'll be able to take some sort of alkyl group and turn it into a benzoic acid. So we're going to be able to turn that into a carboxylic acid, or if there's multiple alkyl groups, multiple carboxylic acids. And so we're going to talk about an oxidation. How do we how do we, how do we do that? Then we're also going to talk about some reductions here, and we're going to be able to reduce both carbonyls and nitros. So we're going to see one set of reagents that will take a carbonyl and basically replace the carbonyl with two hydrogens. Right, so we'll have that type of, of um, reduction. And then we'll also see where we can take a nitro group and turn it into just an amino group, right? So we're going to get rid of those O's and reduce them by replacing them with hydrogens. And I'm going to point this out now and I'll mention it later, but what's, what's going to be useful for us when we're starting, starting to do synthesis problems with these is we want to keep in mind that these changes are actually changing not only the type of activator or deactivator group there, but how they direct. So for example, this alkyl group, right, is an ortho para director, but once I oxidize it to a carboxylic acid, now it's a meta director. And so the timing of when I do that oxidation is gonna be important. Same thing here, I start off with a meta director and I change it to an ortho para director, right? I go from a carbonyl, I go to an alkyl group. And then same thing for the nitro group, right? I go from a meta director to a very strong ortho para director. So we're gonna kind of put this all together in the next few slides here. So let's let's talk about this oxidation in a little more detail. Um, I learned this from one of my professors back when I did uh, undergrad at UC Davis. This is back in like 99 or 2000, something like that. <clears throat> and uh, you know, to, to, to date me. Um, but my, my teacher who I loved, this is the second time I took OCHEM, um, uh, he, just a great, great professor. He called this the Munch reaction. It's not really called the Munch reaction. If you go and you talk to someone, you say like, oh yeah, I did the Munch reaction on this. No one's going to know what you're talking about. Um, he called it the Munch reaction because what, the idea is that you munch away, munch away all the carbons except one. And they all turn to carbon dioxide. So how do we do this? <clears throat> we do this, you can see one of two sets of reagents. One set of reagents is to just use chromic acid. So you can just straight up use chromic acid. Hot chromic acid, that'll do it. Um, that will oxidize these things uh, away. And so you'll notice, for example, that I have one, two carbons on here. This is an ethyl. But when I go to my product, I only have one carbon on here anymore. I no longer have, an, have a two carbon piece coming off. I only have a one carbon piece. And that's because this other carbon was released as carbon dioxide, right? So this is my carbon number two. And that's what I mean by they turn to carbon dioxide. So I do still have two carbons, just one got so oxidized it turned into carbon dioxide and floated away. But the other one got almost fully oxidized but stayed on the ring. So we can use chromic acid. Um, a lot of organic chemistry textbooks have that, um, which is fair. But again, this is a chromium-6 species. Chromium-6 is a toxic heavy metal. Uh, most people don't want to deal with it. It's carcinogenic. It's an environmental hazard. So you could also use, if you'd rather, you, you could also use KMNO4 and then follow that up with an acid workup. So usually you do basic and you heat this up. So I could use potassium permanganate and follow it up with an acid workup too. That also will work. It does the same thing. We'll need the magnesium, magnesium sorry, not magnesium, manganese, the potassium permanganate, the manganese, is not nearly as toxic as the chromium is. So either one of these is going to be fine, whichever one you want to use. And the key here is that you're going to munch away all the carbons except for one, and the only thing that you need is one benzylic hydrogen. That's what you need. That's what's key here. So we're basically going to take any group that has a benzylic hydrogen, so I'll put this in, in as a star, right, needs at least... one benzylic hydrogen. This is going to be important. So like if I look at this molecule down here with this really long one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, this heptyl group, um, I see that I have 
two benzylic hydrogens here, right? The ones that are attached to the benz that are on the carbon attached to the benzene ring in that benzylic position. So yeah, totally. If I add hot K104, and then I followed up with an acid workup step to get that H on there, I'm going to take that whole group. It's getting all munched away. It's getting munched down to just one carbon. And then there's a whole bunch of carbon dioxides. But again, we don't care about that. They evaporate away and we don't see them anymore. So you just take that whole thing, right, and just goes all the way down to the benzoic acid. It doesn't matter how long that chain is. Now, if I look at the one below it, uh, same deal. I need to have some one benzylic hydrogen on there somewhere. So for this isopropyl group, yes, I've got one benzylic hydrogen. For this methyl, yep, I've got three down here, three benzylic hydrogens. But you'll notice for this T-butyl group, there are no benzylic hydrogens, right? Those are all methyls. So this one has no benzylic hydrogens, so it cannot be oxidized. So that one cannot be oxidized. So that means that I'm just going to oxidize the other two. So I can't touch the T-butyl group, but I can oxidize that isopropyl group. Again, it munches off all of those carbons except for one. And my methyl group was only one carbon, so we're just oxidizing that one carbon. So in this case, I'd get the two carboxylic acids. So if you see either um, a hot chromic acid or hot permanganate, that's going to oxidize carbon groups off and until you get just a carboxylic acid attached to the aromatic ring. And so it's a good way to make these benzoic acid derivatives. Now the reductions, we're going to talk about three different reductions. Really two of them are kind of more important, but there's a third one that we're going to learn for historic reasons. Um, not that people do it much. The first one is the Clemenson reduction. And this is the one I'm just going to do it in red because of it's not people don't like to do it much anymore and it's pretty dangerous. The Clemenson reduction, you take a zinc mercury amalgam. So you take these two metals, mix them together, um, both of which have their toxicity. Mercury, you probably know, is quite toxic. Zinc can be pretty toxic um, when you're talking about the metal. Um, and you do it in hydrochloric acid, right? So you've got these really toxic metals and you're dealing with strong acid, <clears throat> but it will reduce benzylic carbonyls, and it will reduce nitro groups, right? So this will reduce uh, carbonyls. Oh, I should say benzylic, excuse me. Benzylic carbonyls and nitro groups. So if I'm looking at this molecule here, this carbonyl out here is not benzylic. It's not on the carbon that's on the benzene ring. So that one cannot be reduced. So if I'm looking for the product for this Clemenson reduction on this particular molecule, I'm going to reduce away that carbonyl. I'm going to turn my nitro group into an amino group, but this carbonyl out here remains unaffected. It's not going to react. It's not going to get reduced. It's just the benzylic ones. Now, the Wolf-Kishner is similar but different. The Wolf-Kishner um, reaction only well, well, just reduces aldehydes and ketones. Reduces any aldehyde or ketone. They do not have to. Let me, let me write that. Reduces any aldehyde or ketone. They don't have to be benzylic. Right? They don't have to be benzylic. So that means it can reduce both of these, but it does not do anything to nitro groups. It leaves the nitro groups alone. It doesn't react with nitro groups. So if you want to reduce a carbonyl and then leave that nitro group, you can. You just pick a Wolf-Kishner reaction. And I don't care that you know the mechanisms for these. Um, if you want to look up the, the, the mechanism for the Wolf-Kishner, you can see it. It's, it's not too bad to understand. You basically form an, an imine, technically a, a hydrozone, but it's like an imine. And then um, the base kind of helps remove some hydrogens. And you can, you can look at the mechanism. But it's always going to be hydrazine, which is this H2N, NH2, and base. You have a couple of equivalents of base, so sodium hydroxide. So if you see hydrazine and sodium hydroxide, that's more or less one of the only one of two times you're going to see hydrazine for this class. And it's going to be so you can reduce aldehydes or ketones, any aldehyde or ketone. And so this would reduce both of those. So that product there in green would be my product. 
Now, we're going to go down to catalytic hydrogenation, which basically is a lot like the Clemenson reduction. It's also going to reduce benzylic aldehyde, aldehydes or ketones. And it's going to reduce nitro groups. So it's going to do both. Um, but again, it doesn't touch the uh, carbonyls that are not benzylic. So really, it's a lot like the Clemenson reduction, but less toxic. So I'm just going to draw, it's going to be the same product as what I had up there, where I've reduced the nitro group to NH2. I no longer have that benzylic carbonyl, but this carbonyl that was out here is still there because it was not benzylic, is the idea. So really, the catalytic hydrogenation has sort of replaced the Clemenson reduction. Clemenson reduction is an old, an older reaction. Um, it got the job done, but no one wants to deal with a bunch of mercury waste, for example. So we just say forget about it. And what we do instead is we do this catalytic hydrogenation, which has the same reagents that you already know, which is H2 and then like palladium on carbon or something, some sort of palladium catalyst usually is what we're, we're doing for this class. So these, you have three reaction types, really catalytic hydrogenation and Wolf-Kishner are going to be the two that you're going to want to use, but you should be prepared if you see a Clemenson reduction, that's what it does. Clemenson reduction does the same thing as the catalytic hydrogenation, just in a more toxic way. So let's look at just some reactions, right? I've got some functional groups on these molecules. I'm going to do some sort of change on their um, the groups that are already on there. So let's take a look at these. Why don't you go ahead and uh, pause, see if you can do these four. And in the next slide, I have a couple of syntheses that I want to show you just so you can start thinking about, well, when do I want to make this change? When do I want to convert my carbonyl to an alkyl group or my nitro to a, a, an amino or something like that? So pause for a second, do these four. Okay, so let's take a look at these here, right? So the first one I have, the H2 and palladium, that's going to be my catalytic hydrogenation. I know I'm just going to reduce away this benzylic carbonyl. So that means, excuse me, that means that I'm going to just end up with that propyl benzene. And what's nice about this is that this is a good way to get propyl benzene on, a, on a, an aromatic ring, to get pro, a propyl group on an aromatic ring without it rearranging on you. That's kind of what's really nice about this is that before, if I tried to just like add n-propyl uh, chloride or something like that with the AlCl3 on a benzene ring, it would rearrange to isopropyl, like in a heartbeat. You're just going to get isopropyl. But if I do an acylation, which has no rearrangements, I can then reduce it to get the thing I want. And that's going to be a nice trick, like we're going to see in the second one, right? Same thing for the second one. I'm getting rid of this carbonyl, but I don't want to mess with the nitro. So this was reduced. This was not reduced. So I need to use the reducing agent um, that does not affect the nitro groups, which was that Wolf-Kishner. So not reduced. So this would be the H2N, N, H2, NaOH. Right, if I had done the um, catalytic hydrogenation or the Clemenson, it would have reduced the nitro also. And speaking of which, here's my nice toxic Clemenson reduction stuff. Clemenson reduction. So that means I know I'm going to reduce my nitro groups and any benzylic carbonyls. I don't have any other benzylic carbonyls. I just have that aldehyde out there. So I'm going to leave it alone. So now I've reduced my nitro to an NH2. So now I have an aniline. And then this group, in theory, just remains unaffected because it's not benzylic. So that's that. And then for the last one here, it looks like I have the Wolf-Kishner again, the uh, hydrazine with sodium hydroxide. So now this will reduce any carbonyl I've got. So that will reduce this one out here. And so I'll end up with this. But it does not affect the nitro groups. So my nitro group is going to stay. And I put a lot of nitros and carbonyls on here because those are affected. These reducing agents and oxidizing agents aren't going to affect <clears throat> necessarily like a halogen on there or um, a sulfonic acid or something like that. So you don't have to worry about those as much.
Now, how would I do this for a synthesis reaction, right? Let's say I have a synthesis reaction. I want to convert, convert benzene into all of these different derivatives. So how am I going to do that? Again, why don't you take a second and see what you can do. So let's take a look at this one, right? I've got a chlorine group and a propyl group. I see that they're meta to one another. But these are both orthopara directors, right? So how on earth can I get two things that are orthopara directors to go meta to one another? And so I need to start thinking, well, you know what? This propyl group could have come from, could have come from this, right? I could have taken that propyl group, which was a meta director. I got excited about my M, which was a meta director and turn it into an orthopara director, right? I can reduce it down. So maybe I put that propyl group on actually as an acyl group and then reduced it because if I have an acyl group, I can get things meta. So that's what I think I'm going to do here. I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to isolate this first. So I get that on there. Now, while it's a meta director, I'm going to go ahead and put that chlorine on. Right, because the acyl group is a meta director. And then I want to get rid of my carbonyl so that I get just that straight propyl group. And so I'm just going to reduce it away. I'll use H2 and palladium to get rid of it. That's my plan. Now for the second one, I have a benzoic acid and I see that I have an iodine meta. So that means I can just go ahead and make my benzoic acid because that is a meta director, right? This is a meta director. This is an orthopara director. So I know I need to get the benzoic acid on before I add the iodine so that it goes meta. So I'm just going to go ahead and put on whatever alkyl group I want. I'm just going to use uh, the methyl because I don't have to worry about it rearranging or anything. I know that if I really do this reaction in the lab, I'm going to want to make sure that um, I do it in benzene so I don't get a lot of polyalkylation. But regardless, and let me move the benzene or the methyl over here so it looks more like our product. So I'm going to go ahead and oxidize this now then. So KMNO4, heat, acid workup. So step one, step two. That's going to give me my benzoic acid. Right, it's going to oxidize that stuff away. And then I can go ahead and do my iodination. So I can just add sodium iodide and hypochlorite, just bleach. When in, the, in the lab, sometimes we have undergrads do this, right? We just dump in bleach um, and sodium iodide to do these iodinations. And that would do it, right? That would put your iodine in the meta position because, again, the carboxylic acid is a meta director. And then for this last one, it looks like I have a similar-ish issue where my aniline is an orthopara director. My bromine is an orthopara director. But, again, these are meta to one another. So I know that my NH2 must have come from the nitro. So I must have the nitro on there, then the bromine, then do my reduction. So it must be that I have HNO3, H2SO4. Right, because this is a meta director. Then, since I want my bromine meta, I'll add Br2. And then from here, I can use the Clemenson or H2 and palladium. Um, again, in theory, for us, it doesn't really matter. H2 and palladium is much less toxic, and it's catalytic, which is great. Zinc mercury is just a mess and toxic, so choose what you want. But I'll put zinc mercury on this one just for the sake of showing uh, both reagents, right? So you got this zinc mercury amalgam with hydrochloric acid. That would reduce your nitro group to an amino group. So we're going to start thinking about how to put all this stuff together. So you now have like all of the tools that you need, more or less, to start doing some much more complicated synthesis problems. So I would start doing those. Do the practice problems, do the practice quizzes or quests, and um, just study up and ask me lots and lots of questions. We can do more examples together. All right, happy studying and good luck.